Tiki Hut Media. Pop the top on your favorite beer or whatever you drink from Tiki Hut Media. This is Soul Ramblings with Jerry Wicker. Hey there, welcome into Soul Ramblings Podcast. I'm Jerry. On this week's episode, we feature week two of the I'm In series that we're doing at the church that I'm a part of, Manatee Life in Bradenton, Florida. Got a link to that church in the show notes of this episode. This past Sunday being Father's Day and Juneteenth, we have a prayer for fathers, and then we'll get into week two of the I'm In series. And week two is I'm Invaluable. So let's get into the prayer, and then we'll get into this week's sermon. Oh God, thank you for giving us another morning to rise and seek your face. Lord, you are wonderful and we love spending time with you. We realize that today there are many directions we can go with the choices we make, but we want to follow your path for our lives. We seek your face and desire your will for our lives. Please help us to recognize your guidance and leadership, even in the smallest detail. We ask you for wisdom today to know how we should respond in every situation we encounter. Thank you for your protection as we go about the day. We want to bless others as you have blessed us. By spending this time with you this morning, we know that you are helping us stay on course throughout the day and the week, giving you glory all along the way. Oh God, bless fathers everywhere every single day. Help them experience how much you love them, how you are always with them, and how you offer healing, wholeness, and help when they need it most. And Lord, enable them to hear the holy calling you have placed on their lives. Allow them to live this calling out with their unique gifts and graces, and empower them to share your unconditional love with their children in both their best and worst moments, their joy and sorrow, and in their youth and old age. God, bless all for whom this might be a painful day. Lord, too many fathers have hurt their children, and too many children have hurt their fathers. Too many fathers grieve the loss of their children, and too many children grieve the loss of their fathers. And too many fathers live with suffocating guilt, and too many children live with that guilt as well. Lord, bring all who hurt your healing. To all who are filled with regrets, your grace. And to all whose pain causes them to feel there is little to look forward to, your hope. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for the morning comes to us from the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, starting with the 12th verse. Hear the word of the Lord. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ, for we We're all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we were given the one spirit to drink. Now, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, 
God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Manatee Life Church, this is the word of God for the people of God. Let's be to God. Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of these, our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable to you. O oh Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I have a really, really strong burden to try to get this message across today because, honestly, it's one of the most important messages I think I could ever preach. And at the same time, I think it's one of the most difficult ones for a lot of people to hear. You see, we've been, we've been looking, we began last week, looking at four different qualities as to how our God sees us, sees you, sees me. And all of them begin with the letters I in. I'm in. Last week, we looked at the reality of I'm invited, that you are invited into the family of God. Today, what I want to do is talk about the reality that you are invaluable to God's work. Now, just to be really, really clear at the outset, invaluable does not mean not valuable. It's quite the opposite. It means that you are uniquely valuable to God. You are valuable just because you are you. You're a child of God. You're invaluable. Jesus told a parable about a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. One wandered off. Just one. And the shepherd so loved the one that he left the 99 others in search of the one. The one was that valuable to the shepherd. Let's think about it this way. I have eight grandchildren. If I lost one, my, I have a grandson. His name is Braxton. If I lost Braxton, I wouldn't say, where's Braxton? I can't find Braxton. Well, I got seven others, so what's the big deal? I wouldn't say that because each one of those eight grandchildren are uniquely valuable to me. The same is true of God, even more so. We are valuable to God because you are you and I am me. You are uniquely created by God. You're invaluable just because of who you are. Not because of anything you've done or any points you might have scored. Just simply because of who you are. You're a child of God. But you're not just valuable because of who you are. You're also valuable because you were created for a purpose. There's a reason God made you. You were created to make a difference. Make a difference in God's church, as God's church. And the reason this message is so difficult for a lot of people to believe is because, well, when we look at the church, we look at everything everybody else is doing. We often feel like we're not really good enough or talented enough or spiritual enough or smart enough to make a difference. 
Well, we look at everybody else and see how incredible they are. And they can quote scriptures and their prayers. And they pray prayers that even God goes, you know, that's a good prayer. And they're powerful and they're flowing and we're insecure and we don't know that much. And sometimes we make mistakes and then we turn around and make even more mistakes. Bigger mistakes. And the lie that so many of us believe when it comes to the church is this. You know, if I weren't here, it really wouldn't make that big of a difference. If I wasn't here doing my little part, no one would notice. Church, that's a lie. My prayer is that you will see that you are invaluable to God's work here at Manatee Life Church. You are uniquely prepared with divine gifts, with passions and talents. Do I wish I could sing like Stephanie? Yes. I can't. God didn't gift me that way. But guess what? God gifted me in other ways. Can you sing like Stephanie? Maybe, maybe not. But God gifted you with special gifts and talents that are unique to you. When God created you, he put you at this moment in history because it's at this time you can best glorify God. You are invaluable to God's work. In fact, I want to show you today this metaphor from Paul to the letter in 1 Corinthians that he uses. And I'm sure the Corinthians would have felt like a lot of us. Not many of them were of noble birth. Many were slaves. They weren't highly educated. They weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouths, so to speak. They may have felt insecure about how they could make a difference. And Paul gave them this metaphor, and he compared the church or the people of God to a human body. And this is what he said. He said, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up the whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. So it is with the church. The human body has many, many parts. You've got an ear, you've got an eye, you've got a nose, got a mouth, a hand, a thumb, an elbow, a knee, some with replaced knees, but I digress. The human body has many, many parts, but all these different parts make up one body. And notice where Paul said, When one part suffers, the whole body suffers. I was telling Stephanie before service, yesterday I had a debilitating sinus headache. It was awful. Well, it was right here, but my whole body hurt as a result of that. So it is with our physical bodies. It is with the body of Christ, the church. We are his body. In other words, you are his hands when you serve people in his name. You are his feet when you take the message of the gospel into places it's never been before. You are his mouth when you lift others up with the goodness and encouragement of who Christ is. You are his heart when you express his love to people who are hurting and feel far from God. You are an invaluable part of the body of Christ. What I hope you'll understand and embrace is this, that every part, part of the body matters. Every part matters. And it's, and it's almost as if the Apostle Paul, when he was writing, could sense the reality that some people might feel like, I'm not that important. What I do doesn't matter that much. If I weren't here, it really wouldn't make that big of a difference at all. But this is what Paul says in verse 14, this metaphor of the body. He says, Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not the hand, that doesn't make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? Every part of the body matters. Every part. Your part. Your role. Your presence, your voice, your opinion, your contribution, 
It all matters in the body of Christ. He went on to say in verse 22, he said, in fact, some parts of the body that seem the weakest and seem like they're least important are actually the most necessary. Those that other people overlook. Those that never get any air time. Those that aren't out on the stage and most visible are often the most necessary parts of the body because, listen to me here, all of us together, all of you, all of us together as Christ's body form Christ's body. We're each a part of it. Every single part matters. Your role matters to the heart of God. And it matters in the body. Your part matters in the body of Christ. And it's often the parts that are least visible or seem like they're not so important. But they are important. They are the most important. i give you an example. Several years ago, I worked with a fellow. His name was Philip. And Philip told me one day, when he was a younger man, as younger men tend to do, they tend to want to do things different than what wiser elder people tell them to do. His father had told him to go out and mow the yard. And they had a push mower. So be sure to wear some closed-toed shoes. And it was hot. He thought he knew better. And he went out mowing with a push mower in flip-flops. You can imagine what happened. He accidentally ran over his foot, and he cut off his pinky toe. I asked him, well, how did, how did that go after, after you lost your toe? He now has nine toes, his little pinky toe, about that big, doesn't seem that significant, doesn't seem like that big of a deal. He spent almost a year in physical therapy because he had to relearn how to walk. Just lost that pinky toe. That's all he lost. He was wiped out. He could not walk. He had to relearn how to walk. It threw his balance completely off. You think you're not important? You think if you're not here, it doesn't matter to God? And it doesn't matter to the body of Christ? You are so, so wrong. You matter to God. You are invaluable. And I hope you'll understand this. Just because... What you do may not be visible does not mean that it's not important, that you're not important. Just because other people don't see it or don't know about it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter to God or matter to all types of other people. You may be that invisible prayer warrior. You may spend tons of time seeking God and nobody knows. You may do something so simple as to help someone feel loved. Give someone a smile who hasn't seen one in a while. Pick up a piece of trash in a parking lot. It may not be incredibly visible, but just because it's not visible does not mean it's not important. So often, some of the most important things that happen are actually the parts of the body that are least celebrated or least visible. We had a volunteer at a church when Beth and I still lived in Tennessee A volunteer came in a couple of times a week and just cleaned the church. Vacuumed, swept, mopped, cleaned the restrooms. You know what? Most people didn't even know she did that. But let her forget it for a couple of weeks and see what happens. Let her not do her part and see what happens. I bet we wouldn't want to go into those restrooms, right? Right? after a couple of weeks of not being clean. Just because what we do is not visible does not mean that it is not important in the body of Christ. You, you are invaluable to the work of God. You are intrinsically valuable, church, because you are a child of God. But you're also practically valuable because you have gifts given by God. You have talent. You're a part of the body of Christ. The church is incomplete without you, without your contribution. 
You're called by God. You're chosen by God. You're capable of doing what God has created you to do. You are part of His body. You are invaluable. You've got something unique to offer that no one else has. You see, church is not a building that we go to. Maybe we need to back up and start there. It's not a building. This building is not the church. It's not an institution we're part of. We are a living, breathing body of Christ. We are the church. We don't go to a church to meet our needs. We are the church of Jesus Christ. And we meet the needs of people. That's what we do. That's who we are. You are an invaluable part of the body of Christ. And you may say, well, Jerry, you know, I messed up. You don't. You don't realize I don't, I, don't, I don't know enough. What if somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer to it? I, that, you know what I found to be most effective? I don't know. Admit it. I don't know. That goes a long way. I don't know. My life, Jerry, it's got so many dark spots. Oh, you don't know what I've done. You don't know my past. I don't. But listen... If you know the grace of God and you know how to love somebody, you are prepared to be a part of the body of Christ. Your contribution matters. Every time you give, it may not be much, your gift matters. Every time you pray, you may not feel like anything happens and your prayers are not going past the ceiling, but your prayers touch the heart of God. Every time we gather to worship with others, you may not feel like it, that particular Sunday, but believe me, it matters to the heart of God and it matters to you to be with others in his family because every part of the body needs every other part. It's what Paul was talking about. When one suffers, the rest of the body suffers. We rejoice with those who rejoice. We mourn with those who mourn. You have no idea how much Beth and I need you. You have no idea how much your prayers carry us. You have no idea that one of you sent me a text earlier this week that said two words. Thank you. How much I lived on that note this week and let it sink into my soul. Was that a big gesture? That person's here this morning, so I'm not going to embarrass them. but you don't know who that person is. You didn't see it. Does that person matter? You better believe they do. And I promise you, with everything in me, I'm going to do my part. And with everything in you, would you agree with me and do your part? And every part is equally important in the family of God. And when we do all our parts, I dream of the day when cars going up and down past Manatee Life Church point and say, Bradenton is different because Manatee Life Church is here. This community right around us is different because Manatee Life Church is meeting needs. Manatee Life Church is showing God's love in a very real way to a dying and hurting world. The church is the body of Christ. And hear me, you are an invaluable part of Christ's body. Let's pray. Good and gracious God.
Today, we ask that your spirit would stir within us. Give us the faith today, God, to do what you've uniquely created us to do. Help us to embrace the truth. We are irreplaceable. We are invaluable to you because we belong to you. And we're called to do our part in your body, as your body, in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That was from this past week over at Manatee Life Church in Bradenton, Florida. Link is in the show notes of this episode to that church. Next week at Manatee Life Church is week three of the I'm In series, and it's I'm Influential. So, And we'll have the rebroadcast of that sermon on next week's episode on next Wednesday. Hope you can join us then. You can get Social with Soul Ramblings podcast on Facebook and Instagram. Links to those pages are in the show notes of this episode. Wherever you're listening today, be sure to click subscribe, leave us a comment and a rating and a review on that platform. We would really, really appreciate it. I want to thank you for the gift and privilege of your time today. And a last piece of advice, if you believe in goodness and if you value the approval of God, fix your minds on whatever is true and honorable and just and pure and lovely and praiseworthy. Until next week, I'm Jerry Wicker. Keep the conversation going drink responsibly. Grace, peace, cheers. Thanks for listening to Soul Ramblings with Jerry Wicker. Download new episodes every week. And if you haven't already, subscribe and be sure to leave us a rating and review. Soul Ramblings is a Tiki Hut Media production. Mm-hmm.